Hello, this is section 7.1, Integration by Parts. This is an extension of what we've been doing in class. I thought I'd go over some more involved examples of integration by parts. But here you have in front of you a screen that gives you the overall definition for integration by parts. We want to consider integration by parts if we cannot integrate an f of x dx directly using a basic table of integrals, or if we cannot use a standard u substitution to integrate the integral. And really, what is integration by parts really doing? It's undoing the product rule for derivatives. Remember that uh, the integral of y prime does equal y plus c, and so if we have um, undoing the product rule, we would have the product rule in our integral and we would actually integrate to that product. So um, that's where the derivation of the rule comes into play is um, using the inverse processes of differentiation and integration um, coming up with the formula. So when do you wanna use integration by parts? usually when substitution does not work and when you have basic integral direct integration methods or algebraic manipulation of direct integration methods does not work. And when you have a product of functions. Now keep in mind that the integral of f of x dx is itself a product. So we would have um, some instances where you might want to use integration by parts is, is that if your f of x is extremely complicated to evaluate. For example, inverse tangent of x. How would you integrate inverse tangent of x dx? Just keep in mind that differentiation in general is a little easier to calculate than uh, taking the integral of a function. So that is the instance where you would let your u equal that inverse tangent and you would let your dv equal uh, dx. So um, also, so we have this uh, a rule, the integral of u dv equals u times v minus the integral of v du. And um, to note that you, you want to, in your f of x dx, identify the components of your f of x dx that you want to be u and identify the components of your f of x dx that you want to be dv. Um, the following tool is helpful in choosing what you want u to be and what dv to be from your integral because historically just calculating several integrals over time it tends to be um, in this format where you will get to um, somewhere in making progress because even after you use the integ integration by parts you will want to be able to integrate the integral of v du and you want that to make improvements right you want this to be easier to integrate that's the goal so, and just going over what tool, um, so an understanding this tool here, the Liate tool, notice that um, if your function or your component of your function is closer to the U, then you want that uh, por portion of your function to be U, and you want the other portion to be DV. And what does Liate, what are the letters of them stand for? L stands for logarithmic functions, I stands for inverse trigonometric functions, A stands for algebraic functions, T stands for trigonometric functions, and E stands for exponential functions. So I thought I'd go over a couple of examples here that might um, help uh, motivate people to continue trying the integration by parts. So here I have x times the tangent squared of x dx. So in using this Liate tool, I notice that a as algebraic is x and that tangent squared x is t. 
and I know that A comes before T in my liate, so I'm going to want to let U here equal the algebraic function, which is X, and then my DU here is going to be DX. I want to let my DV, because remember, I am my integral that I want to evaluate, I want to split into components of U and DV. So I'm going to let my u equal x, and I'm going to let my dv equal tangent squared x dx. And I'm going to need to integrate tangent squared x dx. That's not in the basic table, but I'm going to use an algebraic manipulation of tangent squared dx. I'm going to use the fundamental identity that tangent squared dx is equal to secant squared minus 1 dx, and then I can integrate secant squared directly, that is in the basic table, and that's just equal to tangent x, and the integral of minus 1 is minus x. Good. So then, when I take my integral, I want to set this equal to u times v minus the integral of v du, and now I'm going to make my substitutions. So my substitution here is my u is x, my v is tangent x minus x, and then I'm going to use minus the integral of tangent x minus x, and my du is equal to dx. I do want to continue with my integration, and I want to enforce that at this stage, we start our strategies of integration again. And so we start from the beginning. Can I integrate this integral using direct methods? Can I use it using algebraic manipulations and then direct methods? Or um, can I use a U substitution? And Or maybe I might need to use integration by parts again. So we are beginning our strategies of integration to calculate this one. But I see that tangent x is in the basic table. Um, x is a power function, so that can be integrated using the basic table. And we know that the integral of a difference is the difference of the integrals. And we want to make sure that when we evaluate this that we subtract the entire integral. So. In this case, I'm going to continue with x tangent x minus x, and now I'm going to integrate tangent x, which becomes ln of the absolute value of secant x, and x integrates to x squared over 2, and I end up with a plus c here. And simplifying this integral, I can distribute my minus signs, and I can also distribute this x just to have further dis, uh, simplification. And so if I distribute the x, I get x tangent x minus x squared. I distribute the minus sign, I get ln of secant of x, and minus minus turns into a plus, and I still have my plus c. I do see that x squared and x squared over 2 are like terms, and I have a minus x squared and a plus 1 half x squared, so that's going to give me a minus 1 half x squared. And so my final answer can be x tangent of x minus the ln of secant of x and then minus x squared over 2 plus c. And that is a straight application of the integration by parts. Um, you are going to find that when a standard U substitution does not work um, and you must consider integration by parts, usually when you have an algebraic function times a transcendental function where substitution does not work, you'll want to consider integration by parts. All right, so I have another example here that I'd like to use where it involves integration by parts more than once. 
So again, I see the product of an algebraic function times a transcendental function where u substitution is not going to work because if u substitution would work, my u would naturally be 2t and my du would be 2dt, but I have a problem with the t squared. There are too many um, t's in that, so substitution breaks down. So I'm going to consider by parts. I'm going to use the liate. A is an algebraic function. T is a trigonometric function. A comes before T. So I'm going to use my U equal to the algebraic function T squared. And my DV I'm going to use as sine of 2T DT. If I take my derivative of U, I get 2T DT. And if I take my integral of dv, I would get what function has derivative equal to sine? I get minus cosine. If I use a standard substitution of 2t, I would end up with an integral of minus cosine u and in back uh, uh, times 1 half. And in back substituting, I would get minus cosine 2t over 2. So then I take my integral of t squared sine of 2t dt, that's going to equal u times v minus the integral of v du. I'm going to make my u substitutions and my v substitutions and my du substitutions, and I get t squared, and my v is minus, so I'm going to put that minus in the front, cosine t 2t over 2 take away and the integral of minus cosine of 2t over 2 and my du here is 2t dt. I tend to clean things up before establishing another strategies of integration so I still copy the first term which is part of the evaluation of the integral My minus minus is a plus. I know that I can cancel my 2 with this 2, and I can move my algebraic function to the, to the front, and I end up with t cosine 2t dt. All right, so again, I want to, and I have made progress on that second integral. You can notice that it has the same type of structure as the original, only I have taken down the exponent of t squared down to t. So I see that I have made progress. But again, in doing my strategies of integration, substitution will not work, direct methods will not work, so I must choose by parts again. Only we're going to use two different U's and, and different DV's, but we should use the same structure or pattern that we used in the first round. So we still want to use our U to be um, our algebraic function, which is T, and our DV here to be cosine of 2T DT. I'm going to take my derivative of t, which is dt, and I'm going to take my integral of cosine 2t dt. What function has derivative equal to cosine? Sine does, but it's going to be evaluated at 2t, and if you do a u substitution of 2t, you see where we get the divide by 2 in our integral. Keep in mind that whatever we are using, if we do integration by parts on the second integral for integration by parts, put that in parentheses just in case this ends up being a minus or just in case that ends up being a plus or a minus um, a multiple term like two thirds or something like that. So we definitely want to make sure that whatever we replace that second integral with, which will be the uv minus the integral of vdu 
that we are whatever we have on the outside of that integral is included in both terms of that integration by parts expression. So we drop down. I usually like to line up my equal signs so I clearly see what I need to include. And I'm going to put my uv minus the vdu because that's what I'm replacing my integral with. And so just in writing those extra steps, it helps to see how things come out. And so what is my u? My u in this new one is t. My v is sine of 2t over 2. And then I have minus the integral of sine 2t over 2. And then my uh, int, uh, du is dt. Cleaning things up. That means clearing my parentheses, and I might want to pull out some constants from my integral. I get minus t squared cosine 2t over 2 plus t sine 2t over 2. And I have minus 1 half the integral of sine 2t dt. That's cleaning things up with algebra of integrals and clearing parentheses. And now I still need to integrate that following one before I can bring in my limits of integration and calculate the area. So I end up with minus two t squared cosine 2t over 2 plus t times sine of 2t over 2 minus 1 half times, and the sine of 2t, what function has derivative equal to sine minus cosine, evaluated at 2t, but then we want to divide by that 2, and that is a u substitution. Cleaning things up again, minus t squared cosine of 2t divided by 2, plus t sine of 2t divided by 2 minus minus becomes a plus, and multiplying 2 times 2 is 4, so we'll get cosine of 2t divided by 4. So that is our integral, and we note that our limits of integration for t is t equal to 0 and t equal to 2 pi. Notice that I'm not doing changes of limits of integration with integration by parts because we still end up with an integral completely within t so we want to use the original t limits of integration so avoid changing limits of integration with integration by parts so this is going to be t equal to zero to t equal to two pi and so we want to calculate f of 2 pi and we want to take away f of 0 and making sure that since our complete f of x it has multiple terms we want to make sure that we subtract the entire f of 0. We also want to ensure that we calculate f of 0 and not assume that f of 0 is always 0. So what is our f of 2 uh, of 2 pi? we would get minus 2 pi squared times cosine of 4 pi divided by 2. We'd have plus 2 pi times sine of 4 pi divided by 2 plus cosine of 4 pi divided by 4. And that is my f of 2 pi. And then we want to take away f of 0, and we would have uh, 0 times cosine 0 over 2 plus 0 times sine of 0 over 2 plus cosine of 0 over 4. Good. Good. 
And now we want to make those calculations. We do see that cosine of port, so this is going to equal minus 2 pi squared is 2 pi times 2 pi, which is 4 pi squared. Cosine of 4 pi is 1. And so this is going to be divided by 2. And we have that sine of 4 pi is equal to 0. So this is going to be plus 0. Cosine of 4 pi is equal to 1. So we would have that this is equal to 1 plus 1 over 4. And when we take away uh, 0 times anything is 0. Uh, with the second term, 0 times anything is 0. And in the last term, cosine of 0 is 1. So we would have plus 1 over 4. And in expanding or distributing our minus sign, we get with, and simplifying, 4 divided by 2 is 2. So we would have minus 2 pi squared plus 1 fourth, but then we would have minus 1 fourth. And so our answer here is going to be 2 pi squared. Good. All right, I'm going to end here. I might do a second one on more examples of integration by parts where we might need to solve for the integral. But that does it for this session. I'll